My name is Hanin Kandil, and today I'll be talking to you about how our self-conscious mind, in combination with society, restricts us from doing certain things. To start off my speech, I would like to share a story with you. The story is called The Elephant Trope. It's by Robert Tarson. A man was walking through an elephant camp when he noticed something strange. The elephants in the camp weren't being kept in cages or held by any chains. The only thing stopping the elephants from escaping was a small piece of rope tied to one of their legs. The man was completely confused as to why the elephants didn't just break the rope and escape the camp. They could have easily done so, but instead, they didn't try to at all. Curious and wanting to know the answer, the man went to ask a trainer nearby, and the trainer simply replied, when the elephants are very young and much smaller, we use the same size rope to tie them. And as they grow up, they are conditioned to believe that that rope can still hold them. So, they never try to escape the camp. The only reason why the elephants never tried to escape the camp was because over time, they adapted the belief that it simply was not possible. As children, our personality depended on our imagination and creativity. Our potential was limitless. We used to think outside the box and color outside the lines. We used to jump from couch to couch because the floor was lava. We risked it all. We took the action of doing what we wanted, when we wanted, even if there's a slight chance that all our toys would be taken away the next day. So, what happened? Why can't I do that anymore? Where did all my potential go? Do I not have that creativity and, and imagination anymore? Well, here's the thing. As we grow up, our self-conscious mind, in combination with society, restrict us from doing things or acting in a certain way, in this way limiting us. It's as if our own mind ties us up with ropes, just like in the story. The elephants were held back, not by the small rope attached to one of their legs, but simply due to their belief system. As we continue to grow, these ropes stick with us. They hold us back. They make us believe that we're not capable of doing certain things. They hide our potential. As children, we were told who we are from a young age. Parents, teachers, and even our friends labeled us. They did so not knowing the unconscious impact that these labels had on our brains. Because of this, we grew up to develop a fixed mindset on what we can do. In reality, this can be detrimental to our self sense of self-worth. It, it affects how we take up challenges and how comfortable we are with taking risks. An example of one of these labels is the word smart. Parents usually praise their child for being smart to boost up their self-confidence. And when a child is praised for being smart, they think to themselves, oh, good, I'm smart. However, when they fail, struggle, or mess up in the slightest bit, they start to think to themselves, oh, no, I'm not so smart. How can parenting styles affect our mental health? Some children have over-controlling parents. Dr. Nicole B. Perry from the University of Minnesota was lead author to a study she conducted. Her research showed that children with over-controlling parents have a harder time dealing with the challenges of growing up, especially navigating themselves in a complex school environment. According to Dr. Perry, over-controlling parents limit the opportunities for a child to learn how to be able to regulate their emotions and behavior, which is mandatory for a child's growth. Children who can't regulate their emotions and behavior have a harder time making friends in school and socially interacting with others. This saying that some parents over control their child think that it's good. On the contrary, this affects how a child reacts to things. It makes them feel like they're stuck in their own world where they're unable to think outside the box and show confidence towards themselves and others. Parents need to recognize when their child can handle a situation on their own and give them the freedom to do so. 
This then makes them feel more confident and affects how they take up challenges. How can school systems affect our mental health? I believe that school systems train us like robots. Unfortunately, businesses, colleges, and even our culture have been built around the idea that some people can and some people can't. This is why it made perfect sense to school systems to split us up in different groups. Separating children into different groups makes them, based on their learning abil ability, makes them feel less confident. I want you to imagine a class with 15 enthusiastic children. They are ready to start their day. A teacher walks in and presents them with an assignment. The assignment is to draw a car. Some students were very talented. Others were okay, and some couldn't even draw the visual figure of that car. The day went out, and the teacher collected their assignments. Some students got A pluses, others got Ds, and some got a big fat F. Those students who got high marks grew up to believe that they're highly artistic and talented, and those who got low marks start to compare themselves to others. What some schools don't understand is that creativity is not a skill to learn. Creativity is not a test to take. Creativity is definitely not a program to develop. Creativity is so much more than that. Creativity is the remarkable ability to see things in new and different ways. It's the ability to break down obstacles that stood right in front of you. Creativity essence is in its brightness and the capacity of your dreams to come to life. This element is lost in the teaching strategies of our schools. Let's all go back to a much simpler time. Do you remember being a kid? Do you remember wanting to constantly play around? You played with your dolls and Legos and no one told you how to be creative. No one taught you how to use your imagination. It came naturally to us. We used to pretend we were astronauts floating through space, or kings and queens sitting on our chairs. We used to ask questions like, why is the sky blue? Or why is the grass green? Or are we alone on this earth? Then came school. This is when things started to change. School was okay at first, but then it, for us, it became our worst nightmare. We were placed in an environment where we were bullied and made fun of. Even if you weren't bullied, you were afraid of it happening. Social embarrassment is a huge fear for most kids. According to Pacer.org, 33% of students who have reported being bullied indicated that they have been bullied at least once or twice a month. 15% of those students were called names, 12% of those students were the subject of rumors, 5% were pushed, shoved, tripped, or spat on, and the last 5% were excluded from activities on purpose. On top, of, on top of having to deal with the fear of humiliation, we also had some teachers who told us to stay focused, to stop daydreaming, to live in reality. From this, what did you learn from school? Well, I learned to live in reality. I learned to stop questioning the world. And I learned that there was only one effective solution to every question. This in turn caused us to have mental struggles as we grow up. Rejection, fear, and failure play a vital role in a person's life. What we need to learn is how to overcome these mental struggles. Rejection. Rejection makes you ask questions to yourselves. Am I good enough? Rejection makes you feel vulnerable because of the criticism that comes along with it. Whether it's criticism from yourself or from others, the best way to overcome rejection is by using it, by taking that criticism to improve yourself, to become bigger and better people. Fear. A huge reason why people don't achieve their goal in life is because they do not take action. And the reason why people don't take action is because they're afraid. Fears of the outcome, 
fears of the unknown, fears of failure, and fears of, of not being good enough are all fears we go through on a daily basis throughout our lives. What we need to understand is that all of us here go through the same fears, and it's completely normal. The best way to overcome your fears is by pushing yourself way past it. Surround yourself with people who believe in you, support in you, and motivate you. And people who will help you push yourself past that fear. Finally, failure. Working on something extremely hard and failing is absolutely devastating. And I can understand that. The best way to overcome failure is by trying and trying and trying until you improve. Thomas Edison failed over 10,000 times to invent the electric light bulb. However, he didn't give up. When a reporter asked him if he felt like a failure or if he was going to give up, he simply replied, why would I feel like a failure? And why would I ever give up? I now know over 9,000 ways an electric light bulb will not work. Success is almost at my grasp. Thomas Edison had a rough life. He got fired from his first two jobs, well, for not being productive enough. And throughout his life, his teachers told him that he was too stupid to learn anything. And guess what? He did it. Thomas Edison was one of the three inventors of the light bulb. Edison was not the only successful person who failed before succeeding. Another example of this is Walt Disney. Walt Disney got fired from his, star in his job in the Kansas City Star because his publisher believed that he lacked imagination. Well, he proved them wrong. He went on to be nominated for 59 Academy Awards and is now the great animator of our time. Stephen King. One of his most successful books, Carrie, was rejected by over 30 publishers, one of whom told him that negative utopias don't sell. Bill Gates. Before creating Microsoft, he created this other company, which eventually failed and shut down. Now, he's the owner of Microsoft and is one of the richest men in the world. Colonel Sanders. At the age of 62, he went around pitching his chicken recipe with a $105 security check in his hand. According to some reports, over 1,000 people rejected him. Finally, he found his success with a restaurant, and that restaurant became the first Kentucky Fried Chicken. Now, KFC is one of the largest fast food companies in the world. Take action in creating the life you want. You have to push yourself past your comfort zone. I mean, what is the harm in trying? Norman Vincent once said, shoot for the moon, and even if you miss, you land among the stars. We've all gone through rough times throughout our lives, but we've all survived. You wouldn't be here listening to me if you hadn't survived. So, go for it. No matter how much life tries to pull you back, always continue with the belief that anything you want to achieve is possible. The first step to becoming successful is believing that you can become successful. There lives a warrior within each of us. That warrior within you might not always be at its strongest, and you might doubt that it even exists. However, it is there. You just need to find it and activate it. Believe in yourself. Take the action in creating the life you want. Break the ropes that have been holding you back. Thank you.